Hey y'all, welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. Miss Crystal got her great little wall built on the front of the cold room over here, but we need to go into that cold room and get the vent system put in. You probably saw the video where Miss Crystal put in her insulated wall in the front of the cold room. That's great, it's keeping the ambient heat that's in here from upstairs from getting in there. But it's still not really cooling down because there's no way for any cool air from outside to get down into the cold uh, room. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a couple of holes and put in two vents. One of the vents will allow the warmest air inside the cold room, the air that's up high, to get out. And the other vent will allow the cool air from outside to come in to the bottom of the cold room to help push that warm air out the top. All right, y'all, I'm down here inside the cold room. It's really tight, hard to move around, and the lighting is not great, so I apologize for that. But I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. This up here is the outside corner of the house. I'm going to take an, a hole saw and drill one hole through the rim joist to the outside right here on this corner. And then in this front corner where Miss Crystal had built her uh, wall, we're gonna drill another hole to the outside. Now, what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna drill a bunch of holes down through these shelves as we go down through, and we're gonna have a pipe that comes through the outside wall, down through those shelves, and then stops open-ended near the floor, right down where this, big, where this yellow bag is. That is the cold air intake, right? Cold air will come in from the outside and work its way down into that pipe and come into the bottom of the cold room. On this corner, I'm gonna drill that hole to the outside and it's gonna come straight in to the first joist here, this one this one right, right here. And it's just going to come down a couple inches, the, pi uh, the pipe is, and it's just going to face straight down but stay up near the ceiling. That is the exhaust side. The warmer air that's inside the cold room will work its way up, just heat rises, and it'll work its way out that hole. That will create uh, room, if you will, for cold air to come from outside, settle down into that pipe and replace that warm air, uh, giving us a cooling effect inside the cold room. In order to get going here, I need to get these boxes up off of this top shelf and get some of this insulation out that's still up in here and get these two holes drilled. Pull this stuff out. All right. Maybe next time before I video something like this, I'll have a new hole saw and not an old dull one. <laughs> Toasty. Don't press it on, kids. Okay, so we have our hole to the outside. It looks dark out there because that hole is actually covered up by a firewood rack that we have outside, but we will fix that at some point or another. But for now, we got more holes to drill. Okay, so I have my hole drilled through the rim joist to the outside up there. Now I need to drill holes down through these shelves so that I can get my inlet pipe all the way down close to the, to the floor. So we're gonna move some of these cases of canned food out of the way so that we don't dump sawdust in those like we already did Miss Crystal's cabbages. Don't tell Miss Crystal. Ooh, more coleslaw. Coleslaw. Miss Crystal's hiding all kinds of good stuff in here on me. She's coming down. We better stop talking about her. You got like peach pie filling in here. Yeah. Y'all got to help me talk Miss Crystal into making peach pie. No. Me. Yeah. Mm. It's not time. Pie. It's always time for pie. I have a confession. I may or may not have gotten sawdust on your cabbages. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. See, all that was easy. <laughs> <sighs> Don't be showing off all my goods. One day this will get clean. And then I'll do a pantry tour. It's gonna be like a nine hour video. <laughs> okay, I, I know you're shocked, but I came down here for jars. Okay. <laughs> I want little four ounce jars. Sorry, I just moved them I'm all. I'm gonna recan some right tomato there. paste. Hey, there's 
blueberry syrup in here. We should have pancakes tomorrow. All right, y'all, now we can get to drilling some holes. one and so on down down the line here okay let's drill that one there we have it y'all that's the intake side now we're going to come over to this other corner and get the hole drilled through the rim joist for the exhaust There we have it. Okay, y'all, now that we got both of those sides drilled in and drilled down through the shelves, let me show you how the piping is gonna get put together for each side. All right, y'all, I'm set up here on top of our chest freezer because it's rainy and yucky outside and Miss Crystal is upstairs working on her project. We don't wanna cramp her style. Let's talk about how this piping is gonna go. And we're gonna start with the intake side. Now that's the side that goes down through the shelves and comes out towards the bottom. Now this assume this is my exterior wall okay outside inside up down okay so up here at the top of of my wall where my hole is on the outside of the wall i'm going to have a 90 degree piece facing down so that no rain or snow can can get caught up in it and then, and this is very important, I have a little piece of screen. This screen is gonna go inside this elbow to keep any bugs, critters, that kind of thing out of your cold room. Next, I have a piece cut that will go through my wall and come out far enough that it will clear um, the ledger board on my shelves and ma match up perfectly with the holes that I drilled in the shelves. So that's going to go in here. I'm going to take this screen out for right now because this is tough to get in there. I'm actually going to have to tap it in. So this will get made up right like that. Okay. Next, as I come through, I need another 90 to point down through my shelves. Okay. My shelves are coming down here. To get through those shelves, I have three 24 inch pieces of pipe that I've cut because I can't get one long piece of pipe to go through all those holes. So what I'm going to do is that will come out of my 90. My first shelf is about here and then I will make up the next one. Let's just scoot this over here. And I will connect them with just some black Gorilla Tape, right? Isn't that gonna be pretty? So, I don't need it to be watertight. There's never gonna be any water flowing through it. And I, I don't wanna have to glue it or uh, pay money for a bunch of fittings that I'm not gonna really end up needing in the end. So, black Gorilla Tape is always handy to have around. So that's what we're gonna use. And then what's left over, We'll have around and uh, it'll be handy. So let's take a look at the other side, at the exhaust side. This is the side that the warm air from the cold room can go up and out. That one is far more simple. Now the exhaust side is gonna start just like our intake side did, with a 90 facing the ground outside, on the outside of the wall. Again, we're gonna be using our piece of screen so that no critters can get in there and that will face down so no rain or snow will get in. Now, this is where we get different. On this one, instead of having a smaller piece that will get me just inside the wall to go down through the shelves, I have a much longer piece. This piece is cut to the length to bring me all the way to that next floor joist. So this will come through the wall with the screen, again, right inside here. And when we get to the other joist, that other two by eight, then we'll put our next elbow also facing down. So this will be facing down into the room and it will be left open with the exception of a small little piece of pipe. Now, why do I need this small little piece of two inch pipe? That's because it gets very cold here in the winter 
and surprisingly fairly warm in the summer. So in order to control the temperature in our cold room, we need to be able to control whether or not that air is flowing in and out of the cold room. During the summer when it's very cold outside, if I leave all this open, the temperature inside this cold room is going to start trending toward the outside temperature. Just the same in the winter, only opposite, if I leave this open uh, all the time when it's, you know, negative 40 degrees, negative 30 degrees outside, this is, room is insulated from the rest of the house. So the temperature is going to want to trend toward the outside temperature. In order to stop that from happening, I have a simple two inch test plug. Now these are test plugs that your plumber will buy uh, when they are, uh, when they're done working on your plumbing or building new plumbing in your house, um, they will insert this into the end of a pipe. And when you screw this wing nut, this thumb screw down, it pushes this, it pushes this seal out against the inside walls of that pipe, making a seal. So when I want to shut off the airflow going in and out of the cold room, we will put this plug into the end of that pipe, tighten it in, and we can keep the cold room from either getting too warm or from freezing. So that is why I need this little bit of pipe, little bitty piece of pipe, because these test plugs fit into pipe, but not into the fittings. It will be too loose. It won't fit in here. All right, y'all, enough talk. Time to get her done. Okay, y'all, so I'm back here in the cold room. I'm getting ready to put all those pieces through the wall and in together. I've actually gotten the pieces stubbed through the wall itself so that they're poking in. There's one thing that I did forget to mention. The holes that I drilled are big enough for the pipe itself for the, for the pipe to go through, but not big enough for the fitting end to go through. So that's kind of important. It sort of helps secure the whole thing. So now let's get our uh, intake made up down through these shelves. Now, a quick note. So I mentioned that I cut these at 24 inches long. And the reason that I did that was that the bottom shelf we actually have just over 24 inches for up from the floor. That way we can put large bins or five gallon buckets of vegetables or whatever we need to down there. So that one is a little bit bigger than the 16 inch spacing of these shelves up here. So by cutting these 24 inches, I can come in from the bottom shelf, feed them through, and uh, I will still leave my joints in the spaces of the shelf so that I can get to them and connect them together. So I'll actually come up through this bottom shelf and work my way up. Okay, now we'll take this elbow, get it attached on to the end of the pipe that's coming in, and then attach it into the first piece of pipe going down. Now, grab our next piece of two foot pipe. very fancy black Gorilla Tape because it just wouldn't do to have some weird colored tape that would clash with our pipe, you know. Not quite lined up perfect. Got some nice wrinkles in the tape. And that is what we call Homestead Perfect. Time for next section. Now it came out just about where I wanted it to. It's just above, about, oh, two, two and a half inches above the footing because that will give us room to put that, it, that uh, plug into the end of the pipe that I was showing you earlier. So here we have it, y'all. This is the intake pipe. This will be bringing cold air in. You can see where it goes through the rim joist outside. It comes down through our shelves here and it ends right down by the footer where we've got just enough room in here to get our plug in. All right, y'all, it looks like that intake side is gonna work pretty good. So now we're gonna move on to the exhaust side. Now, if you remember, the exhaust side is gonna go back up in that corner right up there. And it's just going to come through, touch this joist right in here, right there. And then there's gonna be elbow facing down with a small piece of pipe that we can put our plug into if we need to. So let's get after it. 
that fit on there pretty nicely. I got one more thing that I'll show you about these pipes as you bring them through your wall. It can be pretty important. Now this is the exhaust as it comes in through the outside. I don't know how well you can see it here, but this piece of pipe is angled down that way. I did that on purpose. Now, if any moisture does happen to get into this pipe, it's not gonna come and drain and drip out into your cold room. What's gonna happen is it's gonna want to run downhill there. The other reason that this is important is as you want to keep your humidity high in here, there's a good chance that you're gonna get water that could condense inside this pipe. And as it does that, you want it to be able to run outside and drain out and not freeze up or drain in inside into your cold room. Okay, so another note about that humidity that I was just speaking about. Now in a traditional root cellar that you'd have built, you know, 100, 200 years ago, whatever, um, you would be uh, looking at bare earth on your walls or stone or, you know, some other uh, permeable uh, layer along your walls that will allow the humidity that's in the ground to get into your root cellar. Humidity is very important. You want to have between 85 and 95 percent humidity inside your cold room and the reason for that is uh, that's what those root vegetables like to be stored in. If you've ever seen potatoes as you're getting closer to spring or later in winter, you've put them in a basement or whatever, and after a while they start to get wrinkly. That wrinkliness is they're starting to dry out, and that's because they're not being stored in enough uh, humidity. And there's a couple different ways that you can mitigate this. Number one, you can put your carrots, your parsnips, your beets, those types of things uh, in damp sand or damp wood shavings and put that all inside a bin and layer it in there. That will give you sort of a microclimate in there that gives you the humidity that you want. Or uh, you can find some way to get the humidity into your root cellar through either the floor or the walls. Uh, you will see uh, root cellars where people will have a poor, nice poured concrete floor, but then they'll leave a middle square out that just has uh, pea gravel or something in it. And that will allow the natural humidity from the ground to get into that root cellar. What we are going to do is something similar. Now what we have on the floor of our cold room is just a vapor barrier. This is a six mil uh, visqueen or polyethylene sheeting that is keeping the moisture down uh, below it so that our basement isn't, you know, kind of swampy. So, what I'm going to do is right here in the center of this cold room, I will cut a square out that will allow some of that humidity to come out of the ground and fill up this cold room. All right, y'all, I want to show you before we close this up, we're at 61 degrees in here. I'll give you an update on the temperature after it's been uh, venting for a while. Okay, y'all, it's been a couple days. We're down here checking on the cold room and we are at 51 degrees. Thanks for joining us on our homestead journey. Stay tuned for next videos.